chapter 59, the seven functions of the pyramid. I went to the pyramid last July. I'm planning to go again this summer with my husband. I thought it was an amazing structure and that was before I had read Black Roots. What are the other functions of the Great Pyramid? One, power generator and distributor. Two, preservation. Three, transportation. Four, energy balance. Five, prophecy. Six, resurrection. Seven, divine unity. The ancient Egyptian and Ethiopian empire used a certain form of electricity that was generated and distributed by pyramids. It is different than modern electricity in that the modern type is a low form of electricity that requires transmission wires. All the substances of the universe have a range of spectrum of frequencies. You are familiar with the most common spectrum, that of light. Scientists have named the extremes that they know of this, calling them infrared and ultraviolet. That means if you look at the seven colors of the rainbow, starting with red, then orange, then yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, then the light spectrum starts from below red, infrared, and goes all the way to beyond violet, ultraviolet. Similarly, the other forms of matter also have a range. Solid matter comes in a range of solidity, from soft solids like lead to very hard ones like diamond. Liquids also have a range, starting with thin liquids like pure alcohol or substances such as benzene to thick liquids like gels. This is true for all the seven forms of matter through the gases to the ether, light, electricity, and magnetism. Modern generated electricity is a low spectrum type, barely above static electricity, the type that makes your clothes clean. The ancients used a higher form of electricity that did not require wires for transmission. It was transmitted directly in the ether, i.e. in space, the same way radio waves are transmitted. It was transmitted to the temples, which served, among other things, as receiving stations. So the temples had antennas used to receive the transmission. These antennas can still be seen today, erected in front of some of, some of the temples. Modern people call them obelisks. Oh, there is one near you in Central Park, New York, that was stolen by Americans from one of the temples and many more that were stolen by Europeans, perhaps the most famous one being the one called Cleopatra's Needle. Now, the ancients had great reverence for technology. To them, it was a gift of nature coming directly from the gods, the 144 chiefs of the black nation. So they did not treat it as casually as modern people do. Today, everyone in Western countries has access to electricity, including batteries, and they use it casually. There's no reverence whatsoever for this gift of the gods. The ancient use it only when necessary, including it in the appropriate rituals and only for projects that were for the benefit of the general society rather than individuals. Other than that, they went about their business the usual way, using ordinary hand tools. For this reason, modern archeologists claim that the ancients did not have the knowledge of high technology such as electricity because they see the ancient Egyptians going about their business using hand tools and physical labor most of the time. Yet there are many instances where they have seen the manufacture of certain implements such as stone coffins that were obviously made using some kind of high speed machinery. They dismiss these instances as exceptions and so never mention them in their studies and reports. There are many sculptures and other pieces of art found that are made of very hard stone, such as diorites, including vases with very thin walls, narrow necks, and wide bottoms. When they look at them, it's quite obvious that they could not possibly have been made by hand. They were certainly made using some kind of rotary machine that required electricity. These are the kinds of items that are, they bury in the basements of their museums because they do not fit in their theories and explanation concerning the level of ancient technology. The ancients understood the concepts of balance in all of its aspects. They understood that balance is necessary in all things, including the use of technology. Even though electricity is to be used to make life much easier, it is not supposed to be exploited to the point where it replaces all other uses, especially the uses of hand tools and physical labor. Such behavior leads to a deterioration of the human body. It discourages the exercise of our muscles using natural activities. Our muscles need natural activities in order for our bodies to remain in a state of good health. It does not help the body to replace natural activities with our artificial activities, such as weightlifting and gymnasium exercises. The everyday activities of the ancients, such as farming, washing clothes by hand, milling grains, making wine, rowing boats, etc., 
ensure that their bodies never went lacking for natural exercise and the muscular fitness and balance required for good health and long life. That's the reason they kept their ancient ways even in the midst of technology that was vastly superior to that of the modern day. Every person had to reach a certain level of initiation before he could use it. The technology was not given for free or for money as it is today. It was earned by knowledge and understanding obtaining the rituals associated with it. They understood that all technology has a higher purpose above that of merely making life easy. It lends to the overall balance of the forces of nature. Without this balance, the life of a society will de degenerate to one of the two extremes. The extreme of greed, where the gifts of nature are used solely for the satisfaction of physical desires with no spiritual value whatsoever. This is what we see with the way the light-skinned people use technology today. The other extreme is that of over-technologization, which leads to over-intellectualization, i.e. giving up the heart for the sake of the head. This is the case with the extraterrestrial races today. We have given all emotional life for the sake of this intellect to the point where they have lost all capacity to love over to empathize. These two extremes illustrate the end result of the unbalanced use of the gifts of nature. Knowing this, the ancients were able to keep, this high, use, keep using high technology for thousands of years without the harmful effects we see today, such as the ecological disaster that is being foisted upon Mother Earth by the light-skinned races or the genetic deterioration that comes as a result of losing one's capacity to feel emotions, such as it's being experienced by the extraterrestrial races. The pyramids were also used for the preservation of life forms or the function that have been attributed to Noah's Ark. Periodically, it becomes necessary to preserve life forms on earth, both of animals and plants, so that they may continue after certain events that devastate the earth during its periodic cleansing. I will talk more about this function events at some other time. Pyramids are also used for space travel. This requires the manufacture of a monolithic pyramid. This is a large pyramid, much larger than the Great Pyramid, that is made of a single stone. The stone is obtained in space from among the debris of large rocks that orbits alongside the planets that are called asteroids. When our first ancestors came to Earth from Sirius, they used 12 such pyramids, each one occupied by 12,000 men and women. They landed the pyramids at 12 different locations on our Earth that were the energy nodal points of that time. The pyramids remained there for a long time in the far, far distant past, trillions of years ago. Such pyramids are always used when large groups of people leave to settle a new planet. We will see their use again here on our Earth in the near future. Pyramids are also used to balance the Earth's energy. They are placed at the 12 primary nodes of the Earth where space energies enter our planet. Every inhabitable planet receives energies from other stars in space that are essential for human or other life. These energies must be balanced as they enter the nodal points, otherwise they could upset the Earth's magnetic shield. The Earth's magnetic shield is crucial for keeping out things in space that could cause harm to the planet, such as large meteors and harmful rays. Our Earth and other planets in our solar system are still bombarded by such things because our solar system is still evolving. They will cease when the entire solar system reaches a state of perfect, insta perfect stability where all its energies are in perfect harmony with the energies received from outer space. The Great Pyramid also, called, also acts as a prophetic book of stone. It's constructed in such a way that it tells the future story of the age we are in. Every king or queen who rules the earth builds a stone pyramid as a part of their ordination. In this construction, they'll, they'll write the future of their 25,000 year reign. They do not write in hieroglyphs, but in sizes and types of stones used and the way they are placed, as well as the way the chambers are constructed. A person who is initiated into the mysteries can read the future events of the earth from it. It is also used as a resurrection machine. I've already described the two facets of res resurrection for which the Great Pyramid of Giza, Giza is used. Lastly, and most important, the pyramid is used to facilitate divine unity during rituals. This is a function that belongs to the 24 elders. 